welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 30, verses 22 to 33. There's about 11 or 12 verses there. I'm not going to read all the verses, but let me just sample a couple for you. Moreover, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take also for yourself for the finest of spices, of flowing myrrh, 500 shekels of the fragrant cinnamon, half as much, 250, and a fragrant cane, 250, cassia, 500, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, and the olive oil, a hen, this much, and so on. And this is all the ingredients. And uh, you have all these bits here. And then we go on down further. Um, starting in verse 31, you shall speak to the sons of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil to me throughout your generations. It shall be not be poured on anyone's body, nor shall you make any of it like any of the same proportions. It is holy. It shall be holy to you. Whoever shall mix any like it, or whoever puts any of it on a layman, shall be cut off from his people. Friends, that's a pretty strong line, isn't it? So, um, yeah, let's start with the last part, and then we'll come back to the first part. Uh, this is not just because people like the looks or they like the smell of it or whatever. We're not to make any duplication of this. We're not to try to duplicate it. It's not to be put on any random person. So it, to be cut off is basically to be considered as though dead. It's, it's more or less another one of these almost a death sentence kind of a thing. So this is an absolute strong no, capital letters no, don't do that. That's kind of interesting. Also, uh, when you mix all these parts together, the best we can tell, it seems like there would be, instead of being a, a oil that could be poured out, it seems like it would be a paste because when you look, look at the quantities and the scholars look at all the quantities in these things and try to figure out how it would be. So we think that perhaps more oil, enough oil was added besides all this to make it more liquidy. Uh, so that it could be applied, the anointing oil be applied. So this, again, some bits here we don't know. We don't know exact absolutely how this was worked out in detail. What we do know is there's a special anointing oil and it's not for just any person. It's a unique thing connected with the ministry of God's priests in his tabernacle. So notice here, this is about anointing not people. This is about anointing the buildings, the different furniture and the buildings and the, and the actual structures of the sanctuary. It seems that as we read through here that each time, because remember, they traveled through the wilderness, they set up camp, they took it down, they moved, they set up sanctuary, they took it down, they moved, they set up the sanctuary. That This happened across an, a, a large space of time, and perhaps as Moses is giving these instructions, none of them realize how long it's going to be, because they some of these things haven't happened yet. This is going to leave them in the wilderness for about 40 years. But what we do know is that every time they would set up the sanctuary, it would need to be anointed. This is not just a once-a-year thing. It had to be done at least once a year, but... Also, whenever they would pick up camp and move and move and, and move to another location on their wilderness journey, they'd have to bring out and set up camp and then re-anoint all these things and put them in place. So you might ask, you know, well, where do they get the oil? Where do they get the salt for this? Where do they get the oil for that? And where do they get some of these things? Well, there were spice caravans. Spice was definitely a, a, a major commodity and it was a wealth thing. So there were caravans carrying spices back and forth across the desert. Uh, selling spices and oil and you, whatever, what you, what have you, um, you know, it wasn't quite Amazon, you know, coming to your front door, but uh, they had to go out and find some of this stuff, probably had some that came, they got in Egypt, but along the way, they must have also had to make provision to get some of the different things they needed. So caravaneers traveling across the desert in the different seasons, they must have uh, actually bought some of the things they needed that they didn't personally have. So anyway, we don't really know. We're left, we're not told exactly how they got acquired everything. We do know there's a special anointing oil to anoint the structures of the sanctuary. It's unique. It's not to be used for people. It's not to be used for any other thing. And so here we have that. All right, we'll see you back tomorrow morning.